Scalable Waste Gasification, a tour of SWIG. With Scalable Waste Gasification, or SWIG, we can dispose of waste and generate electric power without centralized facilities that suck up enormous amounts of money and take years to plan, permit, and construct. So far, recycling bottles, cans, and scrap paper in those facilities pays off because it costs less than the raw materials for glass, metal, and paper. We're not so lucky with plastic. Recycling plastic costs more than the raw materials for plastic. The extra cost comes from energy to transport, sort, clean, and recycle plastic junk. But if we had SWIG units that turn waste into power in our homes and businesses, there'd be less wasted energy and pollution. Instead of consuming power, we'd produce it. Imagine a device the size of a dishwasher installed in, say, a family residence. We could recycle waste at a molecular level and use the output to generate electric power. The main components are a gas-tight waste containment chamber with a solid-state microwave heating unit, a pump and hydrogen storage tank, and a Stirling heat engine coupled to an electric generator. Plastic waste is placed in the chamber. The chamber is sealed and most of the air is evacuated. The microwave generator heats the waste until it is broken down into hydrogen molecules. The hydrogen gas is pumped into the holding tank. The Stirling heat engine consumes the hydrogen and drives the generator that produces electric power. Obviously, it takes a certain amount of energy to run the device. We'll call that quantity the input energy, or EN, given in joules. The output energy is E out. Also obvious, we want E out to be more than E in. E out comes from the energy we get from the hydrogen in the plastic. By weight, 8 to 14% of plastic is hydrogen. We'll use 11% for this calculation. The energy density of hydrogen is between 120 and 142 megajoules per kilogram. We'll use 131 megajoules per kilogram or 131,000 joules per gram. The efficiency of a Stirling heat engine is about 40%. The efficiency of an electric generator is between 85% to 99% we'll use 92%. In a test done at the University of Oxford, almost 97% of the hydrogen in a small quantity of plastic was extracted within 90 seconds. For now, let's be optimistic and use those results for the input calculation. Starting with the energy density of hydrogen, we'll calculate the output energy for a small quantity of plastic, say 300 grams. The heat energy released by a controlled burn of those 32 grams of hydrogen is over 4 million joules. That heat energy drives the Stirling engine, which transforms the heat into mechanical energy, about 1.6 million joules of it. The mechanical energy from the Stirling engine drives the electrical generator, which produces about 1.5 million joules of electrical energy. That electrical energy is our output energy, E out. So, the output energy is about 17 times the input energy. Thus, it's possible for a SWIG unit to generate 15 times more energy than what we use to run it. Even if the ratio is less, it's likely that processing a quantity of plastic waste in a SWIG unit will generate more energy than running the unit. In any case, the plastic is gone. So maybe it's time to stop thinking big and centralized and start thinking small and distributed. Start imagining the benefits of getting SWIG units into homes, apartment buildings, businesses, and small factories. Get more details about scalable waste gasification by visiting the links listed in the description. The Scalable Waste Gasification Playlist is a hub for information about turning waste into electric power, so watch the other videos in this series. You can use the comments section to contribute suggestions and information. Subscribe to Movies by Martino and keep up with what's going on with SWIG.